Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today we focus on filling out the rest of the hollow. I don't think we're in for much action today. We've got a lot of NPCs to talk to, a lot of crates and barrels to poke through. So it's going to be a town adventure, which actually works out just fine, because as you may recall last time, we could spontaneously read some rando's mind. Which, it turns out, is because we had that scroll of Detect Thoughts that I yoinked out of Shadow Heart's inventory a couple of episodes back. We have now burned that off, but that is actually perfect for a town adventure like this one. That should uh, give us a definite edge as we continue trying to piece together the local narrative. We'll also continue looting everything that's safe to loot, of course. Oh, uh, speaking of which, I did hold off on shopping just yet. We have at least one more vendor in town. Visible from where we were standing, actually. So we'll hold off until we're sure we know what all of our options are before we burn our meager savings. Torch. That'll come in handy. A is for Azeb and Other Gods, Volume 6. Illmater hears the martyr's cries, takes in the ill and the oppressed. When one to help the others dies, then by Illmater they are blessed. Jurgle, or so it's often said, once gave way his bony throne. For Kelimvor he tracks the dead, makes sure that dead souls do not roam. Kelimvor, Lord of the Dead, will take your hand when death arrives. Make sure souls are correctly led to all their proper afterlives. That is a very death-centric volume. Pretty heavy for a kid's book, but that other volume wasn't exactly light reading either. I mean, let's be honest. Almost all the gods in these settings tend to be Horror shows. The Annals of Baldur's Gate. Preface. Centuries ago, a young man sailed from the village of Grey Harbor. Where he went, what he saw, and the deeds he accomplished are simple legends today. But the wealth he returned with years later is a hard fact. Balderon made Grey Harbor rich. His gold built docks, funded businesses, and raised strong walls to protect it all. One of the gates into his flourishing city was named in his honor. But so great was the wealth that flowed through it, that the name of the gate became more famous than the village that started it all. The name Grey Harbor has been relegated to dusty history books and ancient maps. But Baldur's Gate, that name, is on the lips of every traveler in Faerun. That's actually pretty cool. You know, I really feel like they hit a great balance with these lore books. They're pretty consistently interesting, generally well written, and short enough that they don't overstay their welcome. I mean, I don't think we've seen a single one thus far. Ooh, Druid's Ledger. That sounds important. Also, someone taking a break, I guess. Uh, we can't go in through the front door, but we'll... See if we can sneak in there a bit later. But yeah, yeah, I don't think we've seen any books that run more than two pages long. So, you know, generally speaking, like 45, 60 seconds. That's not bad at all. I mean, I don't think it's much of a secret that I do love reading all the things, but... It's nice when they don't overstay their welcome. Goblins, druids, this grove is a death trap. Grab what you can and get out. That's my advice. Noted. I will grab everything I can. Is that everything? Hey there, buddy. I think that's everything. I can pack or talk, and right now I'm packing. 
Radio, I will leave you to it then. Sorry. How long do you think we've got before the goblins come? Maybe it'll take less time to work through the hollow than I thought. We should be getting drunk at least. It's no fun waiting for death sober. I mean, I feel like it's a good time to keep your head clear, but you know, you, you do you. Oh, and if I were a less scrupulous sort, I would be hard pressed to resist finding some way to yoink all that magic gear that just lying in a box. We'll get to the city soon. I am not but let's stay on task. On your face front of stay back, or else. Why? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Just get back. Ow! Oh, my tooth. Ah, teeth. Hold still. I'll have a look. It's the front one. I chipped it on the evil thing. Did you? I don't suppose you were trying to eat it at the time. Maybe. I didn't think it would bite me back. Wait. You're big. You can get rid of the evil thing. Follow me, but be ready for anything. Uh, sure. I am a vanquisher of evil, I suppose. Oh, and right into the restricted room. Which has a very conspicuous alternate entrance on the back. I'm gonna bite the heads off your kids, and your birdies, and your dogs! Oh. Okay, you know what? Change of plans. Let's head this way. We'll cut through here, see what's going on with this cage. Then we'll um, circle around to the back of that storage room. You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way. She didn't kill your brother, Arca. You're better than this. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tieflin. If you ever had it to begin with. Yeah, we should probably intervene. Looks like the Absolute sent me a protector. You're gonna kill him too? You, move! Oh, we could go for Detect Thoughts, but... This is a pretty high-risk situation. Might be a good idea to stick with something we're slightly better at. At least until we de-escalate. I know you're hurting, but this won't avenge your friend. This won't change anything. Oh no. No option for guidance. I guess Shadowheart must be too far away. Nice, nice. Oh, uh, side note, I did unequip the Necklace of Guidance because it disrupts concentration spells. You're right. I wish you weren't. I really do. Damn you. Damn it! Why do you care if a goblin lives or dies? Because you wouldn't just be hurting her. You'd be hurting yourself as well. Vengeance might make you feel better in the short term, but you'd end up regretting it for the rest of your life. You'd better be right. It's all right, Arca. Let's go. Lovely. Let me out, you bunch of softies! Oh, hey, what, what's up, Gail? Is that everything? We'll chat with him in a moment. That's everything. One thing at a time. I ain't sure why you're protecting me. <laughs> Don't care, neither. It's too late to make friends warg me. My tribe's coming. They're gonna burn this pretty place for the glory of the Absolute and hang you by your guts. Hmm. You know, I did just save your life. It wouldn't kill you to say thanks. 
They'll peel your face off and nail it to a wall. I ain't scared of some guard. Stick a dozen arrows in me and priestess guards still patch me up. Got a whole lab set up. Cooks up potions that fix our lads, no matter how much of a beating they take. Could probably stick your head back on if someone was to chop it off. <laughs> Mighty Booyog. A goblin healer. We really are desperate, aren't we? Hey, I mean, a lead's a lead. It's, it's at least worth investigating. Where would we find this gut? Get me out of here, and I'll tell you where to find her. Deal? Oh, um... That's... I mean... Ideally, I would like to pursue this lead, but... We don't want to risk accidentally turning this place hostile just yet. I'll get back to you on that. You're gonna be sorry! Every last one of ya! Actually, can we still... Running out of time, Wargmeat. My family will be here soon. Let me out! Okay, good. So yes, we can come back to that later. Oh, you teeths are all boring. Even your cages are boring. Oh, right. That's the jail cell where they lock you up if you get caught stealing. But, yeah, yeah, I don't want to uh, commit to any specific path just yet in regards to the, the goblin prisoner, Slaza. The last thing we want when we're barely even into this place is to inadvertently turn everyone hostile. At the very least, we should have an escape route plotted out and... And, ideally, take a look at our other options, since I'm sure there are Maybe other potential venues we can pursue, aside from Goblin Priestess. There's our very subtle escape route, should we find ourselves locked up, which, again, we'll try to avoid. But we also have um, the alternate path over here, the one that leads us up to the back of the storeroom, so that is what we're checking out now. Oh ho! And we've got a secret door. You teeths are all boring. Even your cages are boring. We're not going to mess with that just yet, but I have to imagine that is how we get Slaza out of here. We don't want to squander that detect thoughts though, so we'll hold off on anything too adventurous for the time being. I'm gonna bite the heads off your kids and your birdies. I mean, honestly, we're probably pushing the envelope just breaking into this storeroom. I don't like the look of that mushroom. I should stay clear. Huh. Interesting. I don't suppose that explodes, does it? That's what I thought. Cute. Can't risk being an open view. Oh, what are we here? Another torch stock. That's even cuter. Guys, please back away. Otherwise you're getting barreled over. Slowly. Better be cautious. Any sign of another perception check and we have to back off. Ooh. Elixir of bark skin. And oil of accuracy. Nice. 
Not to mention another contribution to my slowly growing horde. Intriguing. I wonder if that has something to do with the evil thing. Looks like she's got line of sight to the entire storeroom, so... No point in skullduggery. We'll just walk in, have a chat with her. Stop! This place is off limits! Leave! Hmm. Gosh darn it. Still no guidance. That's irritating. Odds are still in our favor, but, you know, I'd rather have that bonus than not. We can't swap out characters right now, either. Otherwise, I'd cast it manually. Thank goodness. <laughs> Target in sight. You note her grimace of pain. Something is wrong with her legs. Damn it! Don't... Don't look at me like that. You can stay. Just keep your hands to yourself, all right? Yes, of course. Do you require assistance? I just fall back down. Legs are as steady as a falls. Bloody potion! Hmm. Trouble brewing? No! I'm just an idiot. I wanted an edge against the goblins, and I got it. I'm as strong as a bugbear. And fearless. But the old lady, she warned me of side effects. Should have listened. Now I'm stuck guarding crates. I mean, it's still important work. You just have to think outside the box. <laughs> Deadly serious. Still, the sooner this wears off, the better. Right, of course. Well, good luck with that. And it looks like pretty much everything in here is owned. Oh, not everything. But, of course, they're empty. Yeah, that tracks. Supply log is scrawled and underlined on the inside cover. The dirt-stained pages that follow track the storage and use of food and medical supplies. The flurry of entries near the end suggests that the reserves are nearly depleted. Of all the bloody things to happen! Hmm. Okay, so no real sinister secret there. I really expected evidence of grifting or hoarding or something. Yeah, the evil things in the chest. Oh, I see. Well, that is problematic because I don't feel like Auric is the type who would steal. Though I will take that bottle. And I suppose we can have a glance at this, a treatise on soul coins. Academic Disclosure. This research was funded independently and conducted at a site in Avernus, the first plane of the Nine Hells. Gandalkeep does not encourage or promote the entrapment of mortal souls. Soul coins, as a concept, are one of merciless simplicity. The sum of personal and magical essence, the soul is bound into a minted piece of infernal iron and used as currency by devils and their cohort. They are frequently traded, for their value can purchase mercenaries, magical items, and even fuel the strange engines in the hells. However, there is a fascinating culture surrounding soul coins as well. I spoke to a devil who admitted she has one coin that she will never sell. For it was the bargain that got her promoted out of Lemure status. She connected me to a half-elf warlock who had promised his soul to a coin after death. I was able to look at this contract, which is reproduced below. 
The next 50 pages appear to be a painstakingly written legal document in Infernal, with a headache-inducing number of footnotes. Yeah, yeah, that... that certainly tracks. If this isn't the most boring post in the Grove, I don't know what is. Well, I guess there's nothing else for us to do here. We should all leave. Asterion, try not to straggle. Over here. Come on, it's fine. He's just, just got to get something off his chest real quick. What interesting things. Someone's simply left lying around under poor guard. We should probably hold on to these. Oh, and we should definitely hold on to these. These are far too dangerous to keep so close to the food. I would question it being here at all, but druids do get a little goofy when it comes to poisons. They are... They are very morally gray. All's well that ends... Not as bad as it could have. The evil thing's gone! No! Where was I? Oh, good. I guess the situation resolved itself. We'll be on our way. Oh, right after I read this. The Approachable East, Volume 2. The pages are stained with dust and mud, but between screeds about hygiene while traveling on the road, your eyes settle on this section. There were those that warned me against straying from the river, but I was out searching for an adventure, and where better than the fields of the dead? Living in Baldur's Gate, one hears much about this grand grassy plain, but one never visits, and for a place with such a desolate name, it is positively teeming with life. Well, perhaps not teeming, but there are honest farmers to be found there, and a large number of ravens. Alas, I had no time to venture near the huge hills, or barrows, as the locals call them. But I am told that ancient artifacts are all but bursting out of the ground. A fine spot for a little relic hunting. Okay, you know, given that I believe the entire latter half of this game takes place in Baldur's Gate, that pretty much guarantees we'll be doing a bit of um, field work ourselves at some point. All right, let's do some quick inventory management. Hey, look at all these nice things that Asterion found somewhere. He'll hold on to his key findings, though. No need to give those away just yet. And let's get back to the hollow. There's something for my bucket list. Oh, you thieves are all boring. Even your cages are boring. Hey, guys. Y'all didn't bolt very far, I see. I told you. Not now. Having fun with your new goblin friend? Bet you aren't. Goblins didn't kill me, too. Oh, no. don't say that. Don't say that. I'm just sad and bored. Let me out, you bunch of yeah, that's just called life. Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break? 
Hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something. Well, rather important. Of course. Regale me. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Have we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffused the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you stood in front of a crossbow to prevent a murder. In short, I've grown to trust you. Wow, okay. You know, I really... I really appreciate that they had him name specific things he approved of, because I was absolutely about to make fun of him for lauding our travels together after we met like 20 minutes ago. I'm flattered, Gail. You're not so bad yourself. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. cat. You see, I have this condition, very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. That sounds serious. What kind of condition? The specifics are rather personal, but suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with, though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. You have a condition that requires you to cannibalize raw magic. Gail, you realize I'm going to have many questions about this, right? I can say no more on the matter. Not now, anyway. Just trust me when I say it's all of vital importance. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, and before we were abducted. It's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital. Dare I say it? Critical. Gail, we're not exactly swimming in ancient artifacts. Where would you expect us to find what you need? We've already done the finding. In fact, you have one in your possession. You know for yourself how hard won such an item was, and it will be no easier when even more are required to assuage my hunger. Oof, I was afraid you were going to say something like that. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Yeah, again, that's, that's just called life. All right, buddy, I'll do what I can. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. As do our packs, as a matter of fact. We have such an item already in our possession. Primed for the moment the need arises. I hope I can count on you. I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not crazy about feeding our magic artifacts to anyone, but... He is technically correct. We do have two on hand that we could theoretically give him. And, you know, between the two... I'd probably give him the gloves. Because while they do look more useful on paper, I've also received multiple warnings they might still be cursed. I had assumed they weren't because they removed the specific warning in the original description from the early access build. But back then, if you used them without bearing the mark of the absolute, then you would also be baned until your next long rest. Um, it's possible that it's only triggered if you actively use them in combat. But I am going to test that out next time we get ourselves into a fight. Worst case scenario, Asterion gets cursed, oh no. Which, you know what? I think I am just fine with. Uh, I should make it clear now. Asterion is not going to be staying in the party for long. We'll be phasing him out as soon as we gain access to a substitute rogue. I could use the target practice.
Hail and well met, Damon. Trader number two. Don't be grumpy, Roland. We'll get to the city soon. Thanks for fighting off those goblins. If you need to replace any gear, just ask. My selection is pretty slim. I had to leave most of my equipment in Elturel. This forge has certainly seen better days, but you're the camp smith, I take it? Of sorts. Used to be a bread and butter tinsmith before Elturel fell into Avernus. These days my talents are more eclectic. Learned a lot in my time in the Hells. Hope to forget most of it. But between you and me, there's nothing in all the realms like the utter power of infernal machinery. Alas, my offerings are far more humble these days. Right, well, I'll certainly keep that in mind. Let's uh, see what you've got then. I guess we know who to go to if we ever stumble across some infernal machinery. Safeguard shield. Plus one savings throws. Assorted plus one armor. Hunting shortbow. Plus one shortbow and feller of monsters. Advantage versus monstrosities. Also grants Hunter's Mark. Interesting. That's actually not bad at all. I mean, depending on how frequently you can use Hunter's Mark. But assuming it works like the normal spell with retargeting on a basic action, that might actually be worth picking up. And then a basic assortment of other plus one gear. Oh, and metallic gloves. Those grant plus one on strength saves. We picked some up last time around, but I forgot to look at them. Those are on Shadowheart now. So that is something to keep in mind. Even non-magic gear can grant bonuses. Though, obviously, you'll get better bonuses from actual magic stuff. So the shield and the bow, those are what we're earmarking here. Damon. Okay, let's push up on this platform here. Hope the goblins are smart enough to poison their blades. It must be time by now. We'll start with the kid. I'm waiting on someone and you aren't him. Do you mind? Hmm. Uh, look, he seemed nice and all, but take a hint, huh? Scowl on your face and fright a troll. Yep, he's stealing stuff. Fair enough. I'm just sad. Let's try our luck with Aridin. If it ain't the fearless goblin slayer, you sure you want to be seen with me? I ain't exactly popular with this lot. Temper and sharp tongue aside, you stood up for your friends. I respect that. Half my crew are full of holes. Now I'm going to take the blame for leading the goblins here and losing track of the bloody druid. Where did those goblins come from, anyway? They chased us all the way from the ruins we were poking around in. Ruins, you say? And that's where you lost track of this druid? Aye. His name's Halsin. And if he's still alive, he'll be cursing the day he laid eyes on me. We've got a contract to track down some relic. And he wanted in on the job. Eyes lit up when he heard about it. Didn't work out, though. Goblins got him when we were turning tail. He's either digging latrines or boiling in a cook pot by now. Now that is unfortunate. I don't suppose you still have a copy of that contract. Job's all yours, if you got death wish. There's a wizard in Baldur's Gate that'll pay goblins for a relic supposedly buried round these parts. But gold ain't any use if you're too cold to spend it. Aptly put. I don't suppose you know what this relic actually does. If I knew that, I wouldn't be back here. With half my crew gone. 
But look, if you're itching to meet Kellenvor, I won't stop you. It's called the Night Song. It's supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you the map and wish you a happy funeral. But my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own todger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. All I've got's the contract. It'll show you where we turn back, if you feel like dying. I do always appreciate that trope. The party full of fantastical names and then the one guy who kind of ruins the theme. Eridin, Barth, Melkinda, and Brian. Every party's gotta have one. Well, Eridin, I'm sorry for your run of bad luck, but I appreciate your courtesy in letting me pick up where you left off. Perhaps I'll be able to break the streak. <laughs> Don't thank me. I'll be well on my way to Baldur's Gate when you die. I know you have it. Touch me and I'll bite your fingers off. Oh, hold I on. will. I was kind of tuning out the background chatter, but that sounds important. That's the kid who was just lurking in their camp. I'm only gonna ask you one more time, boy. Hand over my locket. I don't have your ugly locket. i never seen it before. Hand it over or I'll slap the teeth out of your head. Okay, let's not. Well, I mean, actually, ooh. On the one hand, we obviously don't want this guy to just start beating on this kid like a drum, but at the same time, the kid also very clearly did steal something. You'd best give it back, child. There's no need for this situation to escalate. I said I don't have it. Maybe he dropped it running away from those big, scary goblins. You little split tongue freak! Okay, no, wait. The kid's clearly baiting him. You're not fooling anyone, child. Why did you take his locket? Ah. And, of course, we finally get guidance back. Just as we hit a roll, we literally can't fail. That's just how we roll. What kind of question is that? Why does anyone steal anything? Um... Fine. I have the stupid amulet. Take it. No, that's not good enough. What was this all about? Really? To impress a girl, most like. It looked like my mother's, all right? Just take the damn thing and leave me alone! Keep it, kid. You need it more than me. Poor kid. <laughs> yeah, poor kid. But yeah, that kid was clearly baiting him to hit him. Likely so the uh, guards would intervene. Which, in turn, would have almost certainly gotten these guys kicked out. I'll talk to Hi. Thanks for stepping between me and the kid. My mum gave me that amulet. But I think she'd be happy knowing the kid, is it, now? Yeah. I know she would. Um, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. You're all right by me. Well, hey, I mean, if you're happy, I'm happy. Beyond that, not really my business, I suppose. Let's have a look at this contract. A scuffed handbill, stamped with an extravagant seal, boldly proclaims... Adventurers wanted for perilous and profitable quest. Master Larokan, the arcanist of Athkatla, the recluse of Ramazith's Tower, seeks brave and enterprising individuals to delve treacherous temple and recover storied artifact, 
the night song for preservation in Baldur's Gate. Only stout of art and keen of mind need apply. Fame, glory, and incredible fortune assured. Oh, assured, is it? Right, yeah, sure, we can we can definitely see how that worked out for Aridin and his party. Marked as a quest item, though. So, that seems to indicate that we can, in fact, collect that reward. Should we actually succeed in tracking down that artifact. I'm drinking. You're leaving. Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I just had some more questions about... The first druid. Wait, the guy in charge of this place? That's who it was? I already told you. He was at the temple ruins with us. But it ain't like we forced him to go along. As soon as he heard we had a contract to find that night song relic, he was more eager than a hound in heat. When the goblins jumped us, most of my crew scarpered, just like I taught them to. The old codger didn't. Where exactly did you lose him? Gobbo's a hold up in the temple ruins, out west of here. Last I saw Alson, he was right in the thick of them. If you head that way, you'll likely smell them or hear their drums before you see them. West. Very well. Thank you, Erdan. I'll leave you be. Thanks. I am not grumpy. West. So that's not the ruins we saw earlier. You're an idiot. Damn! Goblins! You should probably have that looked at. Oh, I. I was just gonna let it fall off, stick it in my satchel. I ain't letting anyone here near me. They all sat and watched while Zevlor near got us killed. I mean, that's not entirely true. A man died trying to open the gate for you. But look, I get it. Zevlor was worried about his people. You were worried about yours. Neither of you made it out unscathed. And what about our people? Half the crew's lying dead back in that ruin. Even the new lad, his first contract, and we land him in a god's damn goblin nest. He actually stood and fought the stupid bastard. Like I never trained him better. And I'm guessing that didn't end well? Nah. He must have thought we were following. Always the optimist was Liam. Hope they cut him down quick before he saw we were gone. Liam. We're packing up, and I'd advise you to do the same. Seems our kind ain't welcome here. Got a name drop there, so there is at least a slight chance he's still alive somewhere. Or we'll find a corpse named Liam while we're searching for Halsam. Oh no, that's Karlak. Okay. There we go. So that's the Goblin Ruins. That's also where we have to pick up Halsam. And where we can meet the Priestess Gut. So theoretically, if we release Slaza, we could get access to both. Though before that, I suppose we should explore the closer ruins. That's likely to be a much simpler challenge. We're exposed now. And of course, we'd get us some much needed loot and XP. It would be nice to hit level 3 before we tackle tougher challenges. Don't be grumpy, Roland. We'll get to the city soon. Traveler's Guide to the Sword Coast, Volume 9. Inns and Guest Houses. Can't wait to get back to the gate. With the dust of their journey still clinging to boot and cloak, the canny traveler will no doubt seek to secure accommodation within the city post-haste. Below are some establishments that are typical of what the city has to offer. The Blade and Stars. Easily identified by its sign, a wooden shield boasting a curved blade against a field of stars. A handwritten scrawl in the margins notes that the sign is currently not in place. This inn is comfortable, quiet, and highly recommended for travelers seeking to recuperate from their journey. 
Expect unassuming fare at a reasonable price. Moderately clean rooms and passably clean patrons. Fair. The Blushing Mermaid. For those seeking an altogether rowdier night in the city, the Blushing Mermaid should be the first port of call. Named for the life-size wooden mermaid on display, this inn is known for its ill-reputed patrons, frequent brawls, and altogether unsavory reputation. Nevertheless, I feature it here owing to great interest from my readership. I can only advise that you exercise extreme vigilance should you choose this establishment. Elf Song Tavern Most of this passage is illegible due to water damage, apart from the words and phrases nearest the inner margins. Dimly Lit Proprietor, Alan Disembodied Elvish Singing Voice That's probably normal. But once again, I assume all locations that we will be able to visit later down the line. Much like the Field of the Dead. Ooh, more books. And we'll have a dog, right? They don't allow them in Baldur's Gate. Cats, though. Cat. A little orange cat. And a house with a little door so that it can come and go as it pleases. And a high fence to keep eavesdroppers out. Sorry, I, I've heard you talking about cats and I, I couldn't resist. But good luck to you both on your travels. Thanks. I suppose we'll all need it. What about you? Big plans for when you get to the city? You know, normally, yes, but given uh, given my circumstances, probably best to avoid crowds. I do tend to draw attention. Know what you mean. Do we ever? But I I've heard there's all sorts in the city. It, it might not be like it was in El Terrell. I mean, in Baldur's Gate. They give you a chance. Good luck to you. Wish us a little, too. I think we'll all need it. Good luck. Cut his teeth. You know, one of my he favorite parts I of the old EA series was her trying to explain to a Luthan what a cat was. On your face front of troll. I suppose we'll start in the outer city. Get a little business going. Your spiced tea is life-changing. And I can bake up almond cakes 20 at a time. It's funny, you know, the more I play this, the more my memories of the old EA series do come back. But they've changed enough that it does keep me guessing. The Realm According to Bumpo. The book naturally falls to a dog-eared page in which Bumpo describes the more unusual races he's met in his travels. But they weren't half so strange as the bird folk. First Aarakocra I met had the head of a parrot, the body of a human, and the wings also of a parrot. I try not to stare, but it was real hard. Turns out she was one of a motley party, because around her table were a tabaxi, cat folk, a genasi, element folk, and a tortle, turtle folk. Trying to act casual, I asked what the hell they all were. They ignored me, but I can't blame them. To them, I must have looked awfully dull and average, for they were the first of their kind I'd seen. But I was just one of a billion boring humans to them. Yep, such is the curse of both the ordinary and the extraordinary. They both got their drawbacks. The True and Impossible Adventures of Tenebrook's Morrow, Volume 2. An excerpt from the true and impossible adventures of Tenebrook's Morrow, a pulp serial following the real-life exploits of an interplanar ship's captain. The real Captain Morrow is known never to have left her native water deep, and emerges from her rooms at the yawning portal only to exchange scrawled manuscripts for fresh meals and ink. And thus, in the light of the Feywild's ne'er-setting sun, we passed into the land of the Eladrin. My astute resolution to sail around their forests was betrayed. It seems to me that the river itself conspired to change course, bringing the new bride into the shadow of the trees that I might see those dancing figures up close. The form of the Eladrin, with which I am now intimately familiar, 
is that of elves as seen in a fever dream. Slender as wands and with hair of every changeable hue, their moods mirror that fey wilderness from which they spring. One moment, gentle as a still pond, the next inexorable and deadly as a falling mountain. The latter I experienced only after spending many agreeable hours or perhaps seasons among them. A halfling woman employed among my crew as a smith dared to raise her voice in song above that of our hosts. The depth of the insult became clear as the forest fell into silence, and it was only quick thinking on my part that delivered a compromise. When we left it was without our smith, and the only sound was the solitary ringing of her hammer as she endeavored to forge a blade that would sing for the Aladrin more sweetly than she. It has been some centuries since. I hope she has succeeded by now. You sound like your father. Oh, I like that one. It's like a cautionary tale. And I like the uh, the distinction they draw between normal elves and Eladrin. At a certain point, D&D &D really kind of normalized the Eladrin, but they are weird. You know, classically speaking, they were they were fey folk. They were they were alien to most human sensibilities, not just another word for high elves. High elves, you know, were a much more, I suppose, mortal interpretation, relatively speaking. More, um, anthropomorphized, I suppose. As opposed to the fickle and oft unpredictable nature of the Fae that they were originally envisioned to be. One foot, two feet. Well met, we'll meet. One foot, two feet. Well met, we'll meet. No two drakes, Very one mink, now. one draught. Two drinks. One bear, three bears. Come join, drink here. One foot, two feet. Well met, we'll meet. Die if I met can Thank you, Dr. Seuss. Place. Yandala and Garl shared twixt them a farl, all covered in butter, and they liked each other. Along came a fly who flew in with a cry to the buttery farl of Yandala and Garl. When Garl took a bite, Yandala shrieked with fright. Don't eat that, oh my, that's a butterfly. There was an old man named Elman, who made the best buns in Faerun. The elders did scold him whenever he sold them, saying, Elm, bring those buns to our room. That was quite a journey. Started with Seuss and ended with scandalous limericks. We're exposed now. Someone had way too much fun writing that one. The city soon. I am not grumpy. Scowl on your face. Recruitment poster. A man and woman stand side by side in armor emblazoned with a red fist surrounded by flames. Find pride and purpose in the flaming fist. Join today and protect Baldur's Gate. Led by Grand Duke Alder Ringengard himself, you'll be tasked with guarding the city streets, protecting its people, and upholding the laws that govern us. Speak to any of our friendly fists throughout the city, or visit our headquarters at the Sea Tower of Balderon to find out how you can blaze a new career path today. Would you like to know more? I swear, if we get through this game and no one ever says they serve the Flaming Fist, I will riot. And again, huge, huge props to Larian for these lore items. They are a ton of fun to read. <laughs> True. We've known enough grief this ten day, traveler. Don't be the cause of more. I wasn't planning to, but sure. Shame the goblins didn't kill Move along. Yep, sorry. Which just leaves us with this one spot here. Obviously, we won't have enough time to hit the grove proper today, but. This should put us in a pretty good position to do it next time. That aside, you know, honestly, while it's not the most exciting episode, but they put a lot more effort into it than I think most developers do.
Those goblins will rue the day they chose to tangle with this grove. You and I will do some good here. I can feel it. That's the plan. I keep dreaming I'll wake up with my throat slit. May your sleep be more pleasant. Whoa. That was quite a stark shift in tone there, ma'am. But I hear you. Roland? We should have left by now. Damnation! Instead, we're just sitting here, practically begging to be attacked. Staying is a mistake. Maybe so, but would you really feel content leaving your fellow chieflings to their fate? And what about us? There's every chance we've doomed ourselves by helping these people. We will end up fodder for some goblin's blade, all because Leah insists on helping every wounded fall we see. Our best chance to make it to Baldur's Gate is on our own. This place is lost. What's so important in Baldur's Gate that you would leave these people to die? You are looking at Laroican's newest apprentice. Yes, that Laroican. The greatest wizard in Baldur's Gate. That's... I've heard that name before. A young man, yes? Lives in Ramazes Tower in the upper city. The very same. Word in Waterdeep has it he's a bit of a cad. But you say he's an accomplished wizard? Of course he is. The greatest spellcaster along the Sword Coast. As if I'd settle for a lesser mentor. In that case, I'd very much appreciate it if you could arrange an introduction, should we reach the city. Yeah, yeah, that's the wizard who hired Aridin and his ill-fated party to retrieve the Night Song. Interesting that his would-be apprentice is here, too. You know, I, I have heard things about Larokan. Not all of it. Good. Common gossip. The byproducts of ignorance and jealousy. I've admired Laroican for years. Never dreamed he'd answer my letter. But I've worked myself to the bone for this. Few can match me in either magic or talent. The names Roland and Laroican will be known far and wide. You'll see. Yeah, I'm sure it's. And I'm sure you'll get top billing, too. My Thunder Wave will make quick work of any goblin. Just you wait. I wonder if that's Laro again. Me and Roland would never admit it, but they take an arrow for the other. Also stab each other. Not sure what will come first. Thanks for cutting in. There might have been more than words if you hadn't. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Oh, didn't kill me, too. Here's hoping we all make it in one piece. Their names are an anagram for Leroy again. I think that's everything. Cute. We're exposed now. Swing and swivel. You saw you fighting those slimy bastards. Fancy a bowl? Best to fill your belly now while we still can. Indeed. You must feed the beast. Lest it turn its hunger on you. You've been on hard times too, huh? Oh, you know, just another day in the life of an adventurer. <laughs> Look in your eyes says otherwise. Here, have more. We'll need every bit of strength to make it to Baldur's Gate. Trust me. Thanks. Hmm. Doesn't half bad. Looking forward to it. We'll be leaving soon. Make sure you stock up. Oh, and uh, hi there, Auntie Ethel. I didn't even notice you there. So one more, then we're done. Oh, I would uh, also very much like to read that book. How long until Roland shows Bolo's Guide to Nymphs. Depends. The trader appears encouraged by your interest in this item, though of course you'll need to pay for it. Oh, snap. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, yet she won't let us read it without buying it. Man, that... That really takes me back to my comic shop days. Telling folks it's not a library, trying to discourage them from just reading comics and putting them back on the shelf. That'd actually be a pretty solid weapon if we had a monk in our party. But, alas, we do not. I'd die if I met Leroic and Reeking of this place. I'll never get the smell out of my clothes. Aside from that, not much else to see here. Ingredients. Maybe. I am tempted to buy that book, but we should probably save our money for more practical things for now. Yeah. But we will talk with Ani Ethel. Ah, uh, if it isn't the talk of the camp. It's a rare day when I see one of you lot about. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh! There isn't a bit of color in those cheeks, Petal. Are you hot? Cold? Feverish? Auntie Ethel will sort you out. I've lotions and potions galore. How in the world can you possibly tell? Uh, all right, fine, sure. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Let's see where this is going. Aha! Uh -huh. You take a sip of that and you'll feel right as rain, sweetie. Okay, and what, uh, what, what is this you're giving me? Oh, it is just a healing potion. Nothing fancy. Here. You just look like you might need a pick-me-up. I'm sorry to go on about it. But are you all right? You're looking awful peaky. I mean, I'm a little sore, but, uh... You know what? It, it's tough to explain. Oh, I've seen it all. I once had a fella who'd been caught dabbling with a dryad. The wife was none too pleased and introduced him to a pot of boiling oil. But worry not. I fixed him up and depending on the lighting, he looks good as new. My point is, whatever ails you, I promise I've seen worse. Something doesn't add up about this one. Don't tell her anything. What is it, Petal? What's wrong? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like, like we can all tell there's something a little off on this one. <laughs> look at, uh, look at Gale and Asterion's expressions back there. No, no, it, it's fine. It's nothing. It, I, I've just had a lot in my mind lately. I'm on my mind. On my mind. As you wish, Petal. No, do you need anything? I have a few odds and ends for sale. No, I think I'm good. Thanks. Nay, bother, love. Come back any time. Don't be grumpy, Roland. Oh, Ooh, a potion of greater healing. I am nice. Grumpy. Your Not sure I can actually trust that, but You're an idiot. we'll take it. I mean, it, it's not just me, right? She was coming on really strong. Like, we're at full health. There's no outward signs that there's anything wrong with us. Aside from us being, you know, a, a dinosaur. But, but yeah, she was, she was just coming in hot, trying to get us to talk about our condition. It's funny, you know, because under normal circumstances, I would consider that kind of awkward behavior to just be kind of indicative of the nature of low bidder voice acting, you know. But I feel like we've seen enough at this point that I can really kind of give Larian the benefit of the doubt when it comes to that being deliberate. Anyway, uh, obviously we're past time, but mission accomplished. We've cleared out this main chunk of the hollow. 
We'll hit the pause button for now. We'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping. And we will pick up here next time as we head for the Grove proper. How many people are dumb enough to ask? See you then. <laughs> True. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant. Eloise, Crow King LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dragon Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goat Lead, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Jimson, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valen Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. Small. Whiskers. Meow, meow. You know, cat. <laughs>